Hello and welcome to Only Stupid Answers. It's your old pal Sam with my co-host as always, Mr. DJ Wolder. That's me. Coming to you from the same room thanks to the magic of technology. Technology is perfect. Look at that. Look also, at that. I, pl- I played with an older version of Zoom recently, and it has this weird feature where you can like color select something in your background and make it act as a key, and it didn't, it didn't, it didn't work as well as this, shockingly. <laughs> this actually is pretty fantastic, <laughs> what's happening right now. What's happening? Uh, Look at how fantastic it is. <laughs> it's wonderful. But you know what else is wonderful? The newest episode of Harley Quinn on DC Universe. We're talking about Season 2, Episode 7, acting as... Oh, what's the title? I had to have it right in front of me. I was reading the synopsis. There's no place to go but down. There you go. <laughs> uh, acting as a judge, Two-Face sentences Harley and Ivy to life in Bane's prison, a giant pit in the ground. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jim Gordon and Batgirl vow to take back the GCPD headquarters from Two-Face. Andy Daly, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. He's so good. Sounding, He's clearly having a lot of fun. Yeah, and not sounding like Andy Daly is Two-Face. Huh? Not sounding like him? Yeah, he's he's able to he transforms his voice pretty believably into into something that doesn't I I would not immediately associate it as Andy Daly. By the way, because I'm about eleven years late on this, I just discovered Comedy Bang Bang, and he does <laughs> many different voice characters on that show. Okay, so man. it was cool. Yeah, he's like he's got a he's got a quite a repertoire uh, in him. But yeah, no, this episode was great. The court, I gl- I'm so glad they had a court case because yes. it was like. Wait, oh, because it's new, new Gotham. Everything sucks. Yeah, everything, <laughs> everything blows. Like- <laughs> and at first, like when they brought in Man Bat, and I'm like, there's DC, there's Batman villains that are lawyers. You could have done a joke there. But then the bit that nobody can understand him because he's just a giant bat, really solid. Also, as I think, I think we've made it clear in these reviews that we are fans of Bane on this show, uh, and this is a very good Bane centric episode. mm Hmm. He uh, he just wants what's best for everybody. He is a kind-hearted fellow that just <laughs> wants to break Bat and Gotham, and but in a helpful way. Yes. It's hard to... He wants people to be healthy, but to never leave his prison. <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. It is weirdly therapeutic, abusive boyfriend. It yes. is, it's a, <laughs> it is a helpful kidnapper, <laughs> but still a kidnapper. But still a kidnapper. But still a kidnapper. Uh, this was also a really good episode for Jim Gordon, another, another standout uh, in this show. Um, R- really quick, is he putting? Was it sour cream? I thought it was mayonnaise. Was I thought it was mayonnaise. mayo. It was Ooh. mayo into Ooh. the bourbon. Into the bourbon was when mixing it with his finger was a nice. It was a nice touch. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> uh, he's spiraling. He's been spiraling for a while now, and uh, and I like the scenes with uh, with his with Barbara because it was a good example of what the show does really well, where it's over the top humor, but but pretty heartfelt at the same time. Yeah, it's uh, this episode had a lot of good moments for the Gordons as well mm-hmm. as uh, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. A lot of simple rules to follow in Bane's prison. You yes. got to participate, but also you got to make your bed. And if you don't, you can get your legs broken. <laughs> it's very, it's just very few rules. Yes. Also, that take on Victor's as and Killer Croc. I'm like, oh, this is a fun way to get like one off performances from all like the batman villain same with man bat where it's yeah. like yeah you don't need man bat he could just kind of be like the heavy hitter or someone like that you don't need him to talk because clearly you can't understand him yeah although i will say with, with the the mileage the show has gotten out of their take on bane uh i think i think they could probably do more with killer croc i wouldn't mind to see them like really dive into that but but it was cool to see because you I, I don't know at the beginning of the season you feel like wow they are cooking through villains where scarecrow was on gone within last season uh riddler is incarcerated penguin's dead and you're like okay well man bat you, batman has a lot of villains we got man bat mm-hmm. we got croc we got zass we haven't seen hush yet Rat um, catcher uh, rat catcher gets a little cameo but he's pretty frightening i never think about that but whenever anyone can like talk to rats or rats move around i don't know if you ever checked out hilda on netflix but no. um it's uh there's an episode where the rat king appears and you, are you familiar with what a rat king is is it a king, gross is a king of rats Yo, know, oh, it's a it's a real thing that happens in nature, and I am not going to even recommend googling it because it's gross. Is it when but they anyways, all kind of fuse together or something? That's the one. Cool, it's gross. Anyways, that's in Hilda, and when that happened, I was like, "This is a kid's animated series," but I know what this really is, and it makes me feel a little sick. So anytime I see rats, like Willard, Willard me- messed me up more than a lot of horror movies as mm-hmm. a kid because Willard, that idea of someone controlling and talking to rats, is not. My not fave. for you, not for not you. For me. And also Gordon going after his flask. Yes. <laughs> I was like, leave it. Mm-hmm. Just leave it. Mm-hmm. You're okay. There's a little swig left. Yeah. Um, I, Gordon also gets my favorite joke. So um, to, before we dive more into the pit stuff, uh, Two-Face comes to Gordon's uh, home, 
um, Mm -hmm. to finally, finally kill him. And it kind of, you know, it forces a situation where not only does Batgirl have to save him, but she reveals her identity as, as his daughter. And it's a wake up moment. And it goes to one of my favorite jokes. He's like, Hey, are you going to join me in a montage where we skip over, (laughs) skip over all the hard parts of overcoming an alcohol addiction and uh, go straight to me being better. And then they do the montage and then they go and I'm like, that's really funny. (laughs) Because no one wants to see that. No, that's sad. they want they want them to be better. Yeah, exactly. Also, we don't have enough episodes to do that. Mm-hmm. It's expensive to animate that. You want to animate someone getting healthy? We want to animate fights. Yeah, and also, listen, we can touch on some dark topics, but that's that's a little heavy for this show to the shoulder. And by the way, we're I think you'll see an Iron Man two review mm-hmm. on this channel soon, or it might be up already. So you'll see our thoughts on that whole story, Demon in the Bottle. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, they really skipped over that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, I like that. That they that, that was a solid joke. Also, didn't even like connect the dots that like Two Face and Jim Gordon had like an animosity this season, That's but then right. showing showing that they were friends. Yeah. Before in the flashback in the previous episode, you're like, oh, this actually super blows. Like Harvey really 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 blows yeah and And it's interesting that he became such i mean and now i guess he's locked in the gcpd um but he's another one that has not been taken off the map yet which i which is um cool because you know you want to see some of these guys still running around but the meat of the episode is harley and ivy are in bane's pit they they have a, a very short trial and they think they're going to go to arkham and they're just going to break out and nope it's it's bane's pit and uh, people are doing watercolors and knit caps, but they decide to try and use, uh, I guess they have a um, talent show that George Lopez, mm-hmm. <laughs> somehow they got George Lopez to do a stand-up set in Gotham, which is fucking obliterated and off the map at this point. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, they're going to use I that like as that a they, distraction. I like that they got Harry Mandel last year and they have George Lopez this season. Yes. Where it's like these like older comedians yeah. comedians for a different generation but i still think everyone can appreciate like there's no way that i mean everyone knows harry mandel at least from america's got talent but do people remember george lopez from shark boy and lava girl or the <laughs> george lopez show yeah, exactly where, like so there was a great meme a couple months ago where it was like me me as a teenager at 4 a.m waking up from a fever dream and it's just the george lopez like opening credit scene playing at top volume because it's just been playing all night on the tv i know that that was the friends home dvd theme song just repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating anyways if, if anyone has that kind of situation let me know in the comments down below uh but yeah, he uh, he's got a solid set. It's very short yes. to be flown in, and clearly they probably didn't pay his rate, so that's why he wasn't going to stay for very long. Nope. He's going to get in there and then out of there. Yeah. Do, uh, they, do you think Christopher Nolan is aware of what they're doing with his ideas for Bane? No. <laughs> I think no idea. It. No idea. I think I think he'd be fine with it. Well, it's interesting too because I think the only part that really reflects that is some some. I guess he yeah, had the pit and all that stuff, and, and definitely the the speech patterns. Mm-hmm. But like, I just like it's it's. It just this kind of like uh, Bane's almost too sweet for this dark world that he's decided to be a part of. You know what I mean? He's like a he's a, he's a man child with a heart of gold and uh, biceps biceps of steel. Oh, every time he does, like he turns on the venom and he gets really big. You're like, ah, I get it now. Yes, I get it. I get it. Which I think and is smart it- too that they make him threatening as well. Yeah, because you need to understand at least how he's been <laughs> able to function in this world. Yes. And you're like, oh, I get it. Like, he's he's a, a baby that throws a tantrum, and all of a sudden, like, everyone's paralyzed. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, Cheryl, by the way, him giving out his uh, his stuff, his equipment to other people, that's been a pretty solid joke. Cheryl got a, Cheryl got messed up. Yes, she did. <laughs> real, real bad. And Harley tried. Uh, Harley tried to, you know, avoid that. But Cheryl's going to Cheryl. Yeah. Cheryl's going to Cheryl. Yeah. Uh, and I did like when Poison Ivy got to just be really honest. And it wasn't necessarily funny, but, you know, like, they just needed to be funny for the moment where she was no. just like, oh, it's like, ah, uh, this is how I've lived my entire life by choice. And mm. then somebody special came into my life and made me actually want to live it. But doesn't matter because I'm back in the same position I was before. Yeah. So what's the point of changing <laughs> if we're just going to end back up in our in the shitty situations? And that uh, causes the riot. <laughs> And it does. Uh, and man, Victor's ass just goes right on back to murdering people. Yes. It was as a very. As quickly as possible. Yeah, it was a very tentative uh, transition for him. But that all leads to them finally, you know, it looks like, you know, Harley's going to sacrifice, sacrifice herself for Ivy. They have a sweet moment. Ivy comes back in and saves the day. And then they, they finally, after however many episodes of the show, they finally smooch. And it seems to surprise both of them. 
Oh, it surprised me. I because w- w- watch the other episodes we did here, where it's like we. I don't think either of us were necessarily against them doing it. It was just cool how they set up the friendship for both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, you can correct me if I'm sp- not speaking for you, but uh, I-, I just thought the friendship was really sweet to have just two female strong leads just being friends and supporting each other. And also, like if they had done it, like it was kind of confusing with the setup with uh, Kite Man. Yeah. And then this reveal was like, oh. This makes it so much more complicated, yeah. but it felt so believable when it happened because it happened. It was like you experienced the emotion, the same emotions they did. Yep. Instead of just viewing it, I felt it where it was just like, "Holy crap, we just survived a crazy situation and we're free!" Boom, you celebrate and you mess up, and now you have to confront what those feelings are and yeah. what they mean for each of you. Yeah, I think I think you're right on the money because it's you know it's we there had been hints in behind the scenes conversations that they were building to this, but when you watch the show, it didn't feel like it. It felt like it would kind of come out of left field. And I think it was a really smart decision that it, it, it kind of does. And it does for these characters because you're right. It makes the whole situation. Listen, as much as we love Kite Man, Kite Man's great. Kite Man's hilarious. Kite Man, hell yeah. he's ever allowed to have a happy ending. Not only is it not allowed to have a happy ending, we he he's uh, marrying up. Poison Ivy's out of his league. You know what I mean? Po- Poison Ivy could do better. I think we can all admit that she could do better. True. And so this does complicate stuff and what that means. And, and I, I don't know how many things, how many, uh, especially genre shows I've seen that tackle the idea of what happens when you are in a committed relationship, but you have a burgeoning same sex possibly love because they're going to have to go through, are there feelings here? And then, and then if there are feelings here, what does that mean to previous relationships? You know, what do you do with that? There's so many great story opportunities that spin out of this with two oh, characters also, that I really like. It's, it's, it, it's, it, it feels really genius. And they set up with the Mr. Freeze episode that like Harley was dead set on like, why would I be in another relationship? Again? Yep. Like they're just going to manipulate me. And these are two people that fully trust each other. Uh, basically, screw everybody else we have each other yeah and it's kind of it could turn into like a Thelma and Louise where they just like ride off into the sunset or off of a cliff well hopefully not a cliff uh, I hope they have a happy ending then, but I mean they have uh, murdered a lot of people but <laughs> they have but please don't do that uh, I'd rather you guys end up together yes. that'd be sweet but no it, it's man it, you know what I think it's fair to say this is a pretty good show yeah <laughs> I think they, I think they might be slightly smarter than us <laughs> when it comes to doling out information yeah and uh building their characters up to situations we wouldn't necessarily expect but might have a precedent because of the comic book so i'd honestly this episode was uh uh, we talked about off camera you may have said it before when we were were starting out it started out like a pretty okay episode not 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 anything bad but uh the end with like gordon and two-face fighting and just kind of like it's badass and then it's kind of sad just because jim (laughs) gordon can't fit into his like suit and stuff like uh it's a little sad but it uh that ending for both of them the climaxes for both of these arcs is really satisfying and i i was genuinely surprised and uh the fact that there was no music during the credits i was like you can't do that Mm -hmm. you can't pull this i need to know i have to know and now we have to wait a week but even though it's a we watched this a week before the other people but now we still have to wait another week exactly and I'm like, no, i want it now give it to me <laughs> gimme 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 but yeah i give it a nine out of ten agreed really like agreed yeah i think this is one of the i, I really like this episode i'm I, it makes me super excited to see what happens next uh with these characters um yeah i also give it a nine out of ten Fantastic. Gang, let us know what you thought. Let us know what you think about what could happen in terms of their relationship unfolding. Who could Kite Man... I want him to find somebody. I want him to settle down or take off into the air together. I don't know. Who's Giganta with now? Who's Giganta with? Is she still with that one guy? She thinks she's with that one guy. All right. You know what? I mean, we we could get rid of him. (laughs) Yeah, maybe. He just needs to fly on up. Mm -hmm. Flying up up there. Yes. Maybe Catwoman. They could burgle burgle. No, Catwoman would 100% 100 take advantage of him. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> but who can say? I don't know. Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash only stupid answers. Low is five bucks a month. You can watch uh, reviews early. Join us for hangouts and live streams and that, that, all the good stuff. Follow me at Twitter at Sam Basher. You can follow me at DJ Talks Trash. At only stupid answers. Yank out the vowels from stupid. Bang, bang, boom. Gang, if you like our setup, give us a 10 out of 10 in the comments. Mm-hmm. But until then, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.